What's going on everybody? Welcome to Wednesday as I'm filming this. The days are starting to run together. We're starting this video at about 11 o'clock in the morning and it's almost lunchtime. I'm actually making my lunch. I want to share that with you guys because you probably wouldn't believe it otherwise. I'm still eating prison food, folks. Every once in a while, it's a prison meal that just sounds like what's for lunch. And that's what we're making right now. Got the water heating up in the microwave. Got the ramen soups right here. I hate to show you that's what I'm eating out of, but there's my bowl right there. It's the only piece of Tupperware that I got. And we're just gonna whip something up real quick. I'm only gonna use one noodle in this meal because if I eat too much, I'm gonna end up getting super lazy today. And I don't wanna do that. We got a super busy day. This is not a cooking video. I'm just sharing you how quick it is and how easy it is to whip something up real quick. Water's ready. Got some Ritz cheese crackers right here. Gonna crush those up. You guys want a prison meal? You guys want a prison meal for lunch? I'm actually kidding as to why I'm eating this. It is super hard times here on After Prison Show. This is how we're surviving. Even the dogs are eating prison food. Now my health is of concern, so we probably don't even need to use this entire beef seasoning pouch. We're only gonna use eh, about half of it. Got that right there. How about some flaming hot Doritos? Just add a couple of these for a little bit of flavor. It's gonna have this meal looking blood red. It's not for you guys. Get our water up out the microwave that was in here for three minutes. Holy moly, that's hot. And so are those Doritos. Ah. Probably added way too much water right there. It's almost like a little protein shake right there. This is gonna be delicious. All right, it's been about five minutes. Here's our meal right here. Super blood red from them flaming hot Doritos. But it came together real nice. I was a little worried about that because of the amount of water I put in there, but it all cooked up right nicely. Oh shoot, it's fogging up the camera. Cool deal. So we're gonna eat some lunch and figure out what we got going on for today. How you guys doing today? Figured we'd do lunch together. Mm. Definitely taste quite a bit of the Ritz crackers and cheese. I was gonna add a little scoop of cheese to this, but I figured the Ritz crackers and cheese probably did pretty good for that. So not bad. Didn't wanna make this a super big meal because I knew I would get lazy if I did so. Like I said, it's Wednesday as we're filming this and we got a lot of things going on today. I gotta meet with some HVAC folks today. Hopefully that's gonna go good. That's a little bit later on this afternoon. I can't win for losing. Ugh! But before we do any of that, we're gonna do something really awesome. And we're gonna be getting a chance to see somebody who we haven't seen in a long time. Actually just got back in touch with this person for the first time this morning. They had some availability. So we're gonna be going and seeing them and getting an update. And who I'm talking about is a guy that we introduced probably about a year ago. It's somewhere around there. A guy by the name of Darnell Phillips. Let's say hello to Darnell. What's going on with you, man? How you doing, APS family? <laughs> Special shout out to Darnell. We get a chance to see the van for the first time. The only other time I saw this was on the news. As you can see, I told you I, prior uh, you know, to the interview, I, I had to get some little renovations done on the van. You know, I had all my chemicals and everything. I had this my trusty uh, wet vac, wet and dry vac. We're actually going to give you this gas-powered uh, pressure washer. This is going to be a little contribution from, oh, man. you know, me and After Prison Show to you to help your business. There's something right here. Whoa, man. Ain't nothing but the truth. I believe Darnell served something like 28 years in prison for a charge that he didn't even commit. And since then, he has been released. He has been found to not be the person who committed the crime that he was accused of committing. He's been home now for, I want to say probably like for two years. I don't know exactly. We're going to find out today. This man has his own pressure washing business. And after speaking with him today, he has definitely not taken the foot off the gas pedal. And he has been doing amazing things. I think this update is one that you guys are really going to be excited to see. 
I've also been in contact with a lot of other people, so there's going to be other updates coming in the very near future as well. But I'm going to go ahead and finish up my lunch. I've got to make a couple of phone calls and see what else is going on, and I'll be showing you guys a little sneak peek of this big update with Darnell Phillips in just a little bit. You know, I'll be honest, this really isn't even that good. It tastes like some soggy ass rich crackers with a little bit of spice to it. Aggie, what are you doing? You can't get behind the TV. Also, just thinking out loud, I'm getting ready to upload today a third installment of our Joe Ross drawing caricature mug shots. Those videos have not been doing very good. People don't really seem to care for those. I keep thinking though, that maybe, maybe eventually they'll grow on people. But I hate days like today where I know I'm getting ready to upload a video that probably ain't gonna do too great. I still consider it a pretty good video though. We'll just have to wait and see. All right, so just getting over to where we're gonna be filming at with Darnell. I got here about 15 minutes prior to when he's supposed to arrive. That way I can get set up and he doesn't have to be waiting around for me to get set up. We put this together pretty much on the fly this morning and I don't wanna have him just waiting around. I know he's really busy. Crazy enough, I'm gonna be super busy today. I'm meeting with him at 12.30, it's 12.17 right now, 12.21. I gotta hurry up and get this set up. Between one, what time did they say? Between 1.30 and two? Yeah, between 1.30 and two, I'll be meeting with HVAC, so I got a little more time than I thought that I had. I, I could have swore they said one though. Between one and 1.30, one and two. Damn it, I can't remember. I've also heard from another contractor that I've been waiting to hear from, so that's really awesome. I've also spoke with the city this morning and you know, trying to be introductive of myself to one particular person who I haven't had a chance to speak with just yet. Well, I got a chance to speak with that person this morning. They're watching the video, so hello to you, sir. And hey, they actually said they like what we're doing, so pretty cool right there. All right, I gotta get everything set up, make it look real professional. This is where we usually film at. So there's like the table and chairs. There's the background right there. I don't wanna be using the same background. I'm thinking about, I mean, we're gonna have the same background regardless, but maybe like right cheer, nice little couch. That might actually look pretty good. Just trying to give you guys the behind the scenes of how I go about trying to stage the background and stage the scene. You know, I want it to be visually appealing to the eye. These videos and these interviews and these updates that we do. Not all of the time am I able to do that. I read comments or read one on the recent video with Chris where people were like, damn, Joe, you've been doing this for so long. You figure you would have upped your production game. So many other people have upped their production game. Hey, look, I'm basically a one man band. Cody's at his house helping to get videos edited. I'm in the field. It's not easy to do, especially with so much other stuff going on, but no boohoo. I think this is a real good look right here for Darnell. And I'm gonna get this set up and we'll be seeing him real soon. You know, I, I, I was often, I often thought about how, you know, even though I came on shows like Wrongful Conviction, um, the After Prison Show with you, newspapers, you know, I was thinking that even though a multitude of people heard my story, it just didn't get in the ears of the right people who had the ability to overturn my case or, you know, the, the ability to assist me in my exoneration efforts. And so when I went and spoke on the House floor and before delegates and before senators, that, that really encouraged me that, look, my voice is now being heard by the right people. I, you know, that, that, that had me speechless, you know, that really touched my heart, you know, because I've actually had some of them apologize, you know, for what was done to me. You know, that was something, you know, because, you know, you boot, I got booted out of prison 2018. And even though I attained my freedom, nevertheless, being wrongfully incarcerated and your life stolen away from you for 27 years, you, you, for real, you're like, well, no one is acknowledging this. You know, it's, you know, you're, you're out free. Of course you have your freedom, but it doesn't change the damage that was done to my life. You know, left off the streets at 19 years old, came back at uh, 46 years old. You know, that's a long time. It's a huge chunk of my life. And so talking to those 
people, you know, uh, on the House floor and talking to the delegates. To me, that right there, that is an experience that will ever remain in my mind. That was one of the first times I really felt like I had my voice heard by the right people. Okay, I got to film this part on my phone right now. It's about 1.45 and I am rushing trying to get to the flip house to meet with the HVAC. They told me they would be there between 1.30 and 2 o'clock, so hopefully I'm not going to miss them. I'm about 10 minutes away. Haven't heard from them yet to call and tell me that they're there. Hopefully they'll do that if they're over there waiting on me. But filmed with Darnell, awesome to get that update with him. Super positive dude and just really motivating to hear what he's been up to and looking forward to being able to work with him a lot more closely in the near future. So cool deal, we got that done. Now we're on our way over to the flip house to see how all of this goes and hopefully we're not going to miss this contractor. Man, I can't win for losing. It's 205, I got over here at 153 and there was a note on the door saying sorry we missed you. They got here at 129 and they left at 144. They waited for me for 15 minutes. But I'm pissed because nobody called me. <laughs> nobody called. That would have been nice. And they've rescheduled on me twice. They rescheduled the first time was supposed to be Friday. I was here and they rescheduled with me at the last minute. Didn't even tell me a new time. Uh, they just told me they weren't going to be able to make it on Friday. And then today it was supposed to be between two and three well i was on my way to film with darnell i was i was filming with darnell i was driving him to where we were filming at and they called me and said hey we'll be there between 1 30 and 2. i said okay and i definitely was pushing it and i didn't show up over here until 1 53 but damn it nobody nobody called that would have been nice now they won't even answer my call i've called them 10 times since i've been over here they're probably going to block my number so long story short, we're probably back at square one in terms of HVAC. They wrote me a real nice letter though. Sorry we missed you. Sorry we missed out. Planned arrival time of 1.30 to 2 o'clock. I cannot win for losing. It's hot as hell in here too. What the heck is going on? It says that it's 69 degrees AC. There she goes. <sighs> Hauled ass all the way over here for nothing, twice. Did it on Friday, did it again today. So, damn, should have been here. Probably should have tried to, I don't know. All right. So, back at the house where we started at and Super disappointed in myself for missing this HVAC appointment. This was super important today, and I definitely dropped the ball on that. Uh, but they also should have stayed there till 2 o'clock. I don't care. If you give me a window between 1.30 and 2, don't leave till 2. You know, you told me between 1.30 and 2. But whatever, I'm wrong. So I'll wear that. I've blown their phones to pieces. I have been calling and calling and calling and they don't want to talk to me. They finally started texting with me and you know, there ain't no justification for it. I should have been there. I was trying to juggle a lot of things today. Going and seeing Darnell was a big deal. It was awesome to be able to reconnect with him and to hear all the stuff that he's been up to. This man is doing big things and super honored to have him as a part of After Prison Show, but I've also got to get this damn house done. And even though I missed this HVAC, I am gonna be working my ass off to try to get this either rescheduled or find another company that can come in before them and whatever. And the building side of things is in the works as well. I've been in contact with the city. So I've talked with them, I've talked with the builder, and there's that. 
It was a productive day nonetheless. We ate some good prison food. Uh, we got to see Darnell and we missed an appointment. Hopefully, uh, oh, and I've also heard from Chris. Uh, Chris just had to go to court and I'll be bringing you guys an update on what's going on with him. They continued his court date. So now this man is gonna be trying to find work and trying to just keep doing what he's doing. Hopefully, that's what he's gonna be doing. I talked with Shannon today as well. I've planned some time to get with her by the end of this week. I've tried to get in contact with Pee Wee. I don't know what's going on with Pee Wee. One thing about everything that we do here with After Prison Show, with everything that I do, you know, we've worked with and work with and have featured quite a bit of people here on this channel. And it's not the easiest thing always to keep up with everybody. Uh, we're talking, you know, probably 20 people. Maybe 20. I don't know. It seems like it's a lot. But I'm going to... Try to do better about that. I want to be bringing the updates and really chronicling what's going on with people. You know, when we uploaded the video with Chris, there were people who were saying, oh, Joe just exploits felons and drug addicts. And I ain't even trying to hear that shit. You know what? After Prison Show gives a voice to people who don't otherwise have an opportunity to share their story. And some people do have an opportunity with other places to be able to share their story. Like Darnell. Darnell's been featured on a whole bunch of stuff. But most people, they don't get an opportunity to share their story. And you know what? For anybody who says that I'm exploiting people or anything like that, damn it, I'm one of these people too. I'm just in a position where I like to believe that I could try to do something to help. I can't save nobody's life. But I tell you one thing, I'll try to help them any way that I can. And can't nobody who we've ever worked with here on After Prison Show say anything different about that. But in certain cases, things don't work out. And when they don't work out, you know, I'm going to start trying to do things differently. Because trust me, there's a lot of shit that I could be sharing with you that would get hella views. But it's not about the drama. I'm trying to be more on the positive aspect of things. This is After Prison and it's about the broader picture. Yes. For certain, not everybody's going to make it. Not everybody's going to make it in their own life, and their own struggles. And not everybody's going to make it here on After Prison Show. People move on, they go on to bigger and better things, or people just don't want to do it no more. It's not for everybody and it's not for all the time. But I am going to start trying to do better myself of being able to keep up with the folks who really enjoy sharing stuff with us here on After Prison Show and want to be a part of this thing. But if you ask about a certain person and there's not any kind of an update, well then, I don't know what to say about all of that. But I'm just rambling. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. I wanna thank each and every one of you guys for rocking with me on this kind of hectic day. It was a good day and it was a bad day all at the same time, but hopefully by the time it's all said and done, I'll get everything worked out, get this HVAC squared away, get this building stuff squared away, and be able to move on to whatever's coming next after the flip house and also with whatever's coming next with these folks who we're working with. I got a phone call right now. Who is that? Ah, that's Chris. I got to wrap this up. I'll talk with you guys again real soon.